Hi! You're watching the tutorial video for the Polymer Clay Earring Kit 2.0. Um, so if you have a blushery earring kit, which includes a little baggie of uh, template shapes, then you should go back and watch the version one. If you have the circle cutters, then this one is for you. Okay, so my name is Brooklyn. I'm the owner of Blushery and the creator of this kit. If you have not purchased one of my DIY kits, you still may find some helpful info in this video to help you um, make some polymer clay earrings so you can keep watching. Um, so let's get started by running through some of the things that you're gonna find in the kit. So number one obviously is the polymer clay. You are gonna have a pack of eight beautiful colors I am going to be using scrap clay. If you have ever shopped online for polymer clay, you will know that there is like a shortage happening at the moment. So I'm not gonna waste any of my pretty colors. I'm just gonna use this. Um, you will find two glitter colors. This is the gold that is in most of the kit colors. Um, this is just a bigger tub. Uh, you will find three circle cutters. You have glue. You have some earring cards in case you want to give some earrings away as gifts. You have your acrylic roller and wooden skewers which are used as a depth guide. I will explain that further. A toothpick used to create holes for your jump rings. You have a little tiny measuring tape so that you can pop your earrings and feel very confident about the timing that they're in there. The cardboard box itself is what we put in the oven to bake the clay. So even professionals, you know, bake their polymer clay creations in cardboard. It protects the clay from the direct heat. So the whole entire box goes into the kitchen oven. And as we bake our clay at a very low temperature, this is perfectly safe, uh, as long as you keep a close eye on that temperature. Uh, and then lastly, we have um, the earring hardware. So you've got a choice of gold or silver. We have hoops, studs, uh, studs in the backs. So you have jump rings and you have your wire hooks. So before we actually get into making anything, let's have a little talk about shapes and the shapes that you can create using just these three circle cutters. So you can do a lot more than just creating full circle earrings. So I'm going to show you some that I just whipped up just before using my scrap clay. Um, and I can uh, show you how to create some of these. So. First one, well, this is just a circle, <laughs> but it's got a pretty design on it, um, on a hoop. Um, another design you can do is to do two circles on one hoop, but they're not actually connected. They're, they're loose. They're two separate pieces baked separately so that, you know, it has kind of fun movement to it. Uh, this is another one where I've got two semicircles on one wire hook. I like the way they sit one in front of the other and move around a lot. Um, what else have I got? You can create moon shapes. You can create, well this one ended up kind of looking a bit like a snowman, um, but you can stick the clay pieces together before baking. So a lot of these are connected, different pieces connected with jump rings, whereas these are just pieces of clay stuck together and then baked. And that's a very strong bond. Um, I have a, this one. So that's just a little semicircle cut out of the one. This is, has a stud glued on the back. And this one as well. This is a circle cut in half. So you can have a different design on the top and the bottom connected with your jump rings. Again, that's got a stud glued on the back and this is a good example. So we've got obviously the medium circle, little circle cut out, little circles down the bottom. I really like this one. Um, yeah, so these are all using the exact same cutters that you have. 
Also, what we will get into later is creating some more organic shapes using no cutters at all, just the rolling, the roller. Um, okay, let's get stuck in. So I'm gonna tilt my camera down so you can see my workspace and I will just chat as I go. So the first thing to do is to clean your hands, clean your workspace, obviously make sure you're working on a nice smooth surface. And then we need to condition the clay, which is essentially just softening it until it's workable. Some of the clay is already very soft and that's just because I have different, um, not brands, but different ranges of clay in the kits. So if your clay is already really soft, you really don't need to condition it that much. But some of the clay is quite firm. So just get a little bit, squish it with your fingers, fold it over, squish it. You can warm it up with your hands. Um, another way to soften really tough clay is using the roller. So just kind of rolling it out, fold it over, and just do lots of folding and flattening and rolling, and that will eventually um, be soft enough to work with. Now, let's talk about the depth guides. So these are used to ensure that you don't roll your clay too thin. If you're just using this on its own, you might accidentally make a really thin piece that'll be very breakable. So I put the depth guides on either side of the clay, and that ensures perfect thickness even piece. Um, while you're doing this, pick up the clay, turn it around a couple of times. Um, before you put any designs on, I would peel it off the tables to make sure it's not stuck. That is a challenge when working with polymer clay. Um, if you find that these are moving around quite a lot, you can stick them down with a little bit of clay just to keep them in place a bit more. So once you've got a nice um, flat piece, you can use the shapes to cut them out or you can put a design on the clay before you um, cut the shape out. I will leave the creativity up to you. Have a look on Pinterest for inspiration if you want to, that's totally fine. So um, glitter as well can go on now and then you cut it out or you can cut your shape out and then dab the glitter on Either way, it's all good. Yes, glitter goes in the oven on the raw clay. Um, right, so if I'm just using this little cutter here, obviously one end is thinner, one end is thicker. Place it down. I like to give it just a little tiny twist. Now you may find that your piece has quite kind of rough edges. So just using your finger, all you do is just very gently squish those edges down, go around and around, and that makes it really nice and smooth. Uh, now, let's talk about adding holes. So you do have to do a little bit of thinking about your piece and where all the holes need to go. So have a plan, you could even draw draw these things out on a piece of paper before you go. You need to make sure all the holes are in the right place and that they're really nice and close to the edge. It almost looks like it's too close to the edge, but when the polymer clay is baked, it's very strong. Um, and also it's very light, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just using the toothpick to create a hole. Now I like to go in on both sides, so I kind of do a little twist at the front and then I turn it over and go in again through the other side. Now you want your holes to be big, as big as the toothpick. You don't want just a little dab. You want to, the bigger the hole, the easier it will be to assemble. There we go. And again, just squish down the edges of that. So, that's that. Um, what else do I wanna show you guys? I mean, I don't wanna just spend ages making clay because I'm gonna leave that up to you, but I'm just covering um, just the basics here. So let's talk about creating some organic shapes. So just using whichever clay you want, I will show you how to create 
either an organic arch or an organic rainbow or an irregular rainbow, whatever you want to call it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So to create that shape, because I don't have a cutter for it, I'm just going to use the roller. So I'm creating a little arch just like that. Um, it's obviously going to get bigger and wider when I flatten it. So make sure there's quite a big gap here. And then I'm just going to gently and not, uh, you know, super hard um, rolls. I want to do it kind of gently and see how I go. So if it's, you know, becoming a little bit too tall, maybe you want to pick it up, rotate it to make it a bit more wide. I could use that, you know, being pushed out a little bit more, so I'm gonna roll in that direction. There we go. And so that, and you know, you might wanna practice that a couple of times before you really commit to it so you can get a feel for it. So that's a little organic arch. Something else you can do is to create an organic, uh, well, circle or oval or blob shape, whatever you want to call it, if you don't want a very perfect round circle. And again, that is just me putting a little bit of clay here, rolling it out, turning it as I go to create whatever shape I want to. You can even just kind of tug on it a little bit and stretch it. So that's quite a nice shape, which is really popular at the moment in the world of polymer clay earrings. Um, yeah, so uh, what else do I wanna show you? I'm just gonna tilt this up while I, t while I talk to you. Um, yes, have a look on Pinterest. You'll come up with some uh, nice, simple, easy things to try, I'm sure. Um, I'm not gonna go through them all, um, but hopefully that's given you some basic ideas and uh, basic, what's the word I'm looking for? H how to do it. It's, it's easy, give it a go. Um, I would say just kind of play around and get comfortable with the clay before you create some sort of really complicated design and then you do something wrong. I would also recommend testing your oven. So when you bake your pieces, as I mentioned before, they go in the cardboard box on the wax paper. So obviously this will have like a hole in it and some decoration on it, but you just lay it flat, cover the clay with the lid, but allow a little bit of airflow. So I just stick it in the oven just like this. In the oven it goes, I really highly recommend doing a tester piece. So the clay bakes for about 30 minutes per quarter inch, 30 minutes minimum or more if your piece is thicker than a quarter inch. Um, if your oven is too high, your pieces will burn. So if it goes over 130 degrees, your really light colors may turn brown. Your white clay will definitely turn brown. Um, and if your oven is really too high, the clay will kind of bubble and melt and it's really not a good smell. It's not a good situation to get in. Um, and a lot of people will set their oven to 130 degrees and the oven goes way hotter than that. So having an oven thermometer inside the oven is really best practice because ovens are not the temperature that you set it to. It goes up, it goes down, it may be hotter or cooler than that um, temperature. It may never get up to the temperature that you need it to, or it may go way above. Um, doing a tester piece will at least ensure that it's not way too hot. So I'd recommend that. Okay, let's talk about assembling the pieces. So. Literally the only thing I have in front of me right now that is not in the kit is a pair of pliers, which you may or may not need. Um, 
So the jump rings included are as thin as I could possibly find. So you can maybe just open them with your fingers and jump rings, you don't pull it open, you twist it sideways. So just like that, it's obviously a little bit hard to see, but that's how you open a jump ring. So I can do it with my fingers. You might be able to as well. If not, a pair of pliers will help. Um, wait till your pieces are completely cooled down before you assemble them. When they come out of the oven and they're still warm, they're really, they seem like they're still really soft, um, but they don't really harden up until they are totally cooled. Even when they are totally cooled, polymer clay still has a slight flexibility to it, a little bit, which um, is a good thing because it makes them stronger. If it was um, completely hard and brittle and it just did a little bend, it would just snap. But because it's got that little bit of flexibility, it's a little bit protected from breakage. Um, however, don't test it. <laughs> just trust me, don't snap your pieces uh, for fun. Um, so once they're fully cooled, then you can start assembling. Um, hoops, yes, these just go straight into your ear. Obviously not the hoop bit, but the spiky bit goes right into your ear. It is a bit of a skill to get these in. Oop, something fell on the floor. Um, I would recommend piercing your ear with a stud just to really open up that hole and then go in with this one. Um, the studs are glued with the E6000 glue, which is really good quality for polymer clay. Um, if you're gonna glue a stud onto the clay, I would recommend that your earring is not too big or heavy. For example, this is the biggest one. This one is quite heavy to glue a stud to. Glue it doesn't last forever. So even if it's a light piece, the glue may eventually um, break off, in which case you would just re-glue it. Um, but to prevent the stud coming off, save the studs for the smaller and lighter earrings and save the bigger, heavier earrings for the hoops and the wire hooks. Um, now, a note about the wire hooks. So, all wire hooks come with the hoop sideways. Now, if you're trying to connect anything, maybe I'll just take this off really quickly to show you. If you are trying to connect Oh, hang on a second. This example is not gonna work because I put the hole too far down. Say I'm trying to connect my moon to the wire hook. So you need a jump ring on the moon. Then you can see that the hook is the wrong way. This is really hard to show such small things over the camera. Basically the hoop is facing the wrong way. So either you need to put a jump ring in the middle of that, and you need to have two jump rings, which looks a little bit silly if I'm honest, or use your pliers to rotate the hoop, uh, the loop, whatever you wanna call it. So all I'm doing is twisting that loop to the side so that the loop is now straight on, and that will help you hugely using these and connecting your pieces. Um, so I would highly recommend doing that. I think that in the world of polymer clay, um, the hoops should be this way, but potentially maybe if you were working with little metal, different little metal components and stuff, maybe it would make sense that it was the other way. I don't know, it's a mystery. Um, I think that's all I have to say about assembling. So with the glue, now this glue, it's not a super glue, so you don't have to work really quickly. It's actually better to put a little dab of glue on your clay and let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute to get tacky before you stick the stud on. So there's no rush with this. So 
The whole process should be fun. It should be relaxing. I really hope you enjoy it. I hope that that tutorial was sufficient and makes you uh, feel confident going into this project. The other tutorial video, I actually kind of sat down and made some earrings with you. Well, that was the idea. Um, whereas this one, I just gave you basic instructions. So maybe if you don't feel confident yet, you could go back and watch the other one. Um, but I hope that that will do. So good luck. I would love to see your creations if you would like to post them on social media and tag me in it, Blushery Australia. I would love that. Um, and if you tag me in some really gorgeous photos, I would love to reshare them on my page. And I'm here. If you have questions, I am happy to chat. If you're a bit, uh, a bit confused about steps you need to take or if you've made something and it really didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, just send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and we can have a chat about it. So that's it. Okay, have fun.